Yes, as the dust begins to settle from the botched 2023 elections, we are now, on behalf of Ninas, going to respond to the torrents of inquiries about the transition we were talking about. Because we recall that in the Constitutional Force Majeure Proclamation of December 16, 2020, we had listed a five-point demand that became five-point proposition and then five-point agenda. Demand because at the initial time, in the first 90 days notice given to the federal government, the illicit federal government running the, 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 the defunct Federation of Nigeria with the unitary constitution. The 90 days notice was in the period we were expecting them to come to the table of discussion. After the 90 days, we gave another 30 days to the governors and all the elected officials because they come from one state or the other, senators, house members, another consultation. What do we do? Our union is in distress. Can we go to a meeting and leave the journey to election alone? Of course, they didn't come. They went to Asaba to run their mouth about what they were going to do. Then we extended to the nationalities, to the peoples of Nigeria, 120 days, and the international stakeholders that ran all the way to August 17, 2021. And so what began as a, a demand on the union became a proposition before all and then agenda meaning that whether they come or they don't come the owners of the sovereignty will assert their sovereignty the owners of the sovereignty will, will take their portion out of the failed union and rework their relationships among themselves there's no quarrel between the east and the west or between the Middle Belt and the South, we are together in that boat. There's only one adversary. The ones coming from Mauritania and Senegal and everywhere in the Sahel to kill people here in the attempt to take their land with their local uh, sponsors, uh, El Rufai and the, all of uh, the others who are receiving them. And so, the questions that have been coming to us, how exactly do we go to that transition now? And so we, we take our bearings from what we placed on the table for those who are talking about the interim government because they've now landed in the ditch we warned them about. We will go back to what we placed before the country since December of 2020. The five-point proposition that uh, would define that transition. How exactly do we get to it? How exactly do we manage it to arrive at uh, the objective, at the goal of reworking what is wrong with union. I'll take it straight from how we first put it. We said, number one, a formal announcement acknowledging the constitutional grievances and sovereignty dispute now declared by the people of the Southern Middle Belt of Nigeria. Acknowledgement of constitutional grievances that have now become a dispute formally declared. Number two, a formal commitment to the wholesale decommissioning and jettisoning of the 1999 constitution as the basis of the Federation of Nigeria as was done by the government of apartheid era South Africa in 1990 to commence the process by which the apartheid constitution of the then South Africa was eased out. Simply put, a commitment to decommission the 1999 constitution. 
unitary constitution. Number three, a formal announcement suspending further general elections under the disputed 1999 constitution since winners of such elections will swear to and govern by that constitution. That's self-explanatory. To put a time frame for when these things that have been outstanding since 1967 will be done. Because that was what we went to discuss in Aburi. How do we relate in our union? Or has the union collapsed? Therefore, summary of number three, a formal announcement suspending further national elections so that we can go and do the business of uh, reworking the business of our union. Number four, and that's where we have arrived now, because everybody can see that the constitution is gone. Everybody acknowledges, everybody now agrees with us that it has, that that constitution has to be thrown into the dustbin. And everybody, those who are thinking that they should get to election first before we go to that discussion, election has come and gone. So <coughs> can we now proceed with the business? So number four is, that is the content, what is this transitioning that Ninas is talking about? And how will it be initiated? We said a formal initiation of a time-bound transitioning process to midwife the emergence of fresh constitutional protocols by a two-stage process in which constituent regional blocks will, at the first stage, distill and ratify their various constitutions by referendums and plebiscites, and in the second stage, negotiate the terms of federating afresh as may be dictated by the outcomes of the referendums and the plebiscites. A time-bound time bound transitioning. That is, we have suspended, we have agreed that the election is not the way to go. We are now saying we will, in this period, we can say it is three months, because all the work has been done since <laughs> Nadeko became Pronaco and all of what we did to become MNN and uh, uh, Ninas and going to court in 2007, going to the international arena, getting the UN instrument and all of what uh, the work has been done. The draft constitutions are in place. The charters of relationships in the multi uh, you know, uh, ethnic uh, region, you know, regional blocks where, for instance, in the lower Niger, you have the George Robo, the Hanang, the Efik, the Ibo, the Shekiri, you know, everybody on his father's plot holding on to their sovereignty and their, uh, you know, father's plot to discuss with their neighbors and document how they can relate, how they can, they can, how they can federate. If the rest of Nigeria, if we agree to continue in any form of union, like uh, Germany and France and Portugal, doing European Union. Those will be our own dictation as, as agreed amongst us. It's not anybody else's business. And so it is, uh, it is in saying that, that that time bound transitioning process, you know, uh, is what has to be, you know, in, in, introduced. It's what has to be initiated now in place of the election that has gone bad. We're no longer talking about suspending, we're no longer talking about, uh, oh, uh, let's not go to election. We have gone to the, the election has collapsed. And we can see that it is because of the constitution that the election collapsed. And so the business to be done now, no other business will be tolerated. No other business will be tolerated. Including patching up things to see whether we can get a better election. For what purpose? Under what constitution? To govern who? Which space? Number five. A formal invitation to the people of South and Middle Belt of Nigeria to work out and then place a transitional authority which shall specify the modalities for transitioning process including composition and mandate of the transitional authority as well as the time frame for transitioning and other auxiliary matters. In bracket, in bracket, we had said, having concluded consultations with key segments of society, these propositions now constitute the five-point agenda of the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalist Alliance for self Nation NINAS, and will be pursued most vigorously until realized. This was in December 2021, we were telling everybody that it has come to where we've concluded all the waiting and consultation with other people. The nationalities are now to go 
and do the business by themselves. Whether government comes or not, is well, if, if let nobody think that uh, what Ninas is saying uh, must wait for when government repents and comes. The nationalities own their sovereignty inalienable. They own their right to self-determination inalienable. The fact that they have uh, worked out all the processes among themselves and those who are pretending to be government in Abuja and uh, the state capitals are refusing to come to deal with it in, you know, in confiscation of our sovereignty. That's what they are doing. They are, they, are, they are defying us. They are defying all of us, those of them in government house, pretending they are now the owners and custodians of our sovereignty. The National Assembly, inclusive, they are all defying the, 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 the sovereign constituent components of Nigeria. The people whose sovereignties have been consolidated into the Nigeria that is now disputed. Those who were elected to, who, who were sent to deputize, to, 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 to represent them, are now, you know, uh, uh, confiscating their sovereignty and staying in the distant land to say we now own all of you. That's what everybody in Abuja is doing to the people they claim to represent, whether they are president or they are senator or house member or minister. And so the transition we are talking about highlights first order of business, 1999 constitution for host aid decommissioning. When? No for the election. We've had the last election we will tolerate in 2019. This one has collapsed. It's not even a matter of <laughs> whether anybody accepts or not. This one has collapsed and nobody can introduce anything that relates to election as long as this constitution has not been, you know, uh, laid to rest. And so the earlier the better. Let us go now. No, we are not going to accept the outcome. All of what happened on the 25th of February and the one that will follow will just be a matter of, uh, it, of, of, of it, it, we are not, it's not of any interest to us. It's all going to be basis of assumption of governmental power and authority. Let those who are being uh, awarded certificate here and there listen to it carefully. What happened on the 25th of February, even after the court proceedings on the subject matter, will not become basis of uh, assumption of governmental authority and power in this space called Nigeria. The owners of the land are the ones saying so. The owners of the sovereignty that have been confiscated are the ones saying so. Those who think they have become the owners of all of us and who are banding up, swearing to defend and uphold the constitution that we reject, the constitution that inserted our signature against without reference to us, we better listen when we can listen. Otherwise, the owners of the sovereignty are going to take back their sovereignty by whatever mechanism they devise with no apology to anybody, with no, with no requirement for consensus or agreement with anybody. They only need to be in their ancestral space. They only need to be distinct nationalities, Ijo on Ijo land, Ogoni on Ogoni land, Yoruba, is going, Yoruba land. Their sovereignty is inalienable, it belongs to them. They are the ones who have to decide the terms of unionizing with anybody else. And it is by referendum not a few politicians going to <coughs> decide it over their head. It is by referendum that they will commit to being in union. That's the meaning of the two-stage process. They will work out their own charters in their spaces. Look at this map again. You will see that apart from the Sharia that has seceded, Sharia belt that has seceded from the union, there is a, a delineation in the balance of uh, showing the Yoruba block, showing the lower Niger to the eastern half of southern Nigeria, and showing the middle belt. All the nationalities, you know, uh, here, have been discussing this matter across the last 24 years. They've worked out their constitutions and their charters of relationships. They are only processing them for ratification, adoption and ratification. That's where we are now. So the people doing the election, hoping to come and govern Nigeria, that Nigeria represented by this map, defined by that constitution we are rejecting. This, uh, this, uh, where is that, where is that uh, booklet of evil? It will not happen. It will not happen. Let us go. Those who have not, whether you are in government or you are wherever you are coming from or you are in political party or you are contesting election or winning election or hoping to be part of a transition that will go to interim government that will go to do another business or Basno Joe should listen carefully. That thing you went to, that the Basno Joe went to say in Port Harcourt about the need to go to do work out a constitution that the people can, 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 consider their own. Do not by any means 
assume that this will be easy. We have made many false starts in the past. We have steadily become impatient with democracy, its principles and practice, as we demand instant results. But past failure should not discourage us from embracing new fistas or perspectives that will guarantee our survival. Without reinventing the wheel, therefore, let me state very clearly that the principles I have been talking about include but certainly not limited to building and compacting a truly people-led and people-driven constitution that they will own and defend against political predators of any form. This is the basic foundation that when you involve the people in the process they understand it, make their input, see the document as their own. Not only women and not only will they defend it, but it will also guide their political actions, assignments, and realignments. If this constitution, if the constitution of Nigeria was made by Nigerian people, will Buhari be defying the constitution? the way we have seen, defying the Supreme Court the way we have seen, it won't last 24 hours because the people will rise up in defense of their constitution. That was what Obasanjo went to describe in Porta Court. Unfortunately, he doesn't, be, he doesn't seem to believe, we've dealt with him at length, he does not believe that the sovereignty belongs to the people. He thinks it belongs to the class of 66, that they will decide what will happen to everybody. Why is he now coming to bring P2B to do what he did not do for eight years in government house? We engaged him, and he was the, he was the toughest opposition. He was, he was the most adamant opposition to solving this problem when he was president. So what, what does he want P2B to do now that is rallying everybody to say, oh, good leadership? What will P2B do, do with constitution that tie his legs and hands? And so let nobody deceive himself. The class of 66 that imposed this calamity on all of us, must now leave the stage. Must now leave the stage. They've done enough havoc. They imposed this constitution in 1979, having killed 3.5 million people between 67 and 1970. In 1999, they found a way to revive it. Ibrahim Bangida going to bring a from prison. After Absalom Abaka, all of them, we have tolerated it beyond any, any measure of, it cannot be stretched any further. Let the class of citizens hear very clearly that they've done enough havoc. There's no part of the solution of this problem that will come from them. But a, a good thing that Obasanjo, their prefect, the head slave of the South, has gone to confess that the people and the people alone will have to do their constitution, which they will then be ready to defend against all predators. Those were his words. Who are these we, the people? Is it any group of people gathered in Osho, the market, or in Ochanja market in Onija? No, it is Ijo on Ijo land. Ijo as Ijo on Ijo land. Yoruba as Yoruba on Yoruba land. Just like Scottish people as Scots in Scotland. Like Catalans in Catalonia. So these are the we, the people. For the illiterate lawyers who have been going about talking about writing another constitution to go and change the one that was there. First order of business is to define the who, the we, the people are that are going to federate. The Yoruba must be on the table as Yoruba. Not somebody from nowhere going to write constitution to say, okay, <laughs> Yoruba is here now. The other, it must be Yoruba in exercise of their sovereignty, sitting with the in exercise of their sovereignty to decide whether they want to be in union and they have to go, it has to be by a referendum. We are explaining now what the contents of this transition is. Because of the number of inquiries, the secretariat is overwhelmed almost, but we, we, because we have answers. Otherwise, we would have been overwhelmed like others. No, we had answers that have been there for three years before people plunged into elections. The election has come to grief now. Where do they go from here? 
let us now dismount from our high horses and go to transition. If we're not going to that transition, I tell you, there is no Nigeria for anybody to govern going forward under that constitution. And if anybody wants to do it by brigandage, I hear some people want to plot the, uh, say the military coup and the all kinds of interim arrangements that will go to the work election to come again. All of those will not work. All of those will be, will be, will be prevented from, from, from taking root, no matter how they come. If Buhari, after eight years, with all the guns he amassed, with all the people he brought from everywhere, with guns to come and kill off the owners of the land, if after eight years he has not delivered the land, let those who have been invited to continue the task, like the Gowonian task of keeping Nigeria, you know, by force. When Gowon was commissioning that task of keeping, to keep Nigeria one, it's a task that must be done. He did not tell them the quantum of blood that is required to feed that monster every day. Eastern Nigeria contributed 3.5 million lives. The blood of 3.5 million people from Eastern Nigeria <coughs> was required to keep that monster. From that time to this date, that monster had had to feed on blood of people in turn. Ijo had contributed their own blood enough. Ogoni had contributed their own blood enough. Yoruba is contributing, contributing blood now. The middle bed, the chief, everybody, the, the, the Langtang, they are contributing blood to keep that monster that Gowon said had to be kept one. And candidate Pitobi says it is one Nigeria he is fighting for. It's such a great pity. It's such a great pity that such should be said at all. They were telling all, we're telling all that that monster must now be put to death. That monster that fits on the blood of the constituents. That monster of unitary Nigeria. Our quarrel is not with Nigeria, the federation. Our quarrel is Nigeria, the unitary state that is defined by that constitution. Let the distinction be made clear. So those who are saying it must, the unity of Nigeria, Everything starts with the unity of Nigeria. Our concern is for the Nigerians that are trapped here. The transition we must embark upon now is one that acknowledges the sanctity of life for all, which Sharia forbids. Sharia requires the adherents to kill the infidel. The Nigeria we are discussing now must acknowledge the equality of men, which feudalism forbids. Feudalism believes that some are born to rule others. And so, those two preliminary objections must be taken along before we go to the two-stage process. I will not be in any union with anybody who owes it a duty of faith to kill me. I will not be in any union with anybody who does not understand or acknowledge that all men are born equal. When we settle those two, we will now come to the question of equity. We are not even to talk about whose turn it is to preside over, over the madness. We are talking about constitutional, the structural inequities imposed by constitution, they imposed. And so the transition we're talking about is very clearly spelled out. The booklet you see here has been ready since after we declared the first major. It has all of, it's like a handbook for how to undertake the union reconfiguration and reconstruction we're talking about. By the time uh, we make out the call, for those who now want to work with the Nina's template for doing what has to be done, uh, this booklet shall be available. It, 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 it will soon get on Amazon. Everything you need to know about what the problem is and how it is being solved, step by step, you will find here. Secretary to make available for those who make inquiries, but eventually it will be on Amazon for everybody to pick up and work for for, for their own space. Yoruba sovereignty must be recovered by Yoruba as basis of doing any business with anybody else. The just sovereignty must be recovered as long with their land and their assets that have been confiscated via that concession and their economic assets awarded as concessions to the children of uh, and descendants of uh, Uthman Danfodio. I think we can hold it here. Thank you.